Hello to all of my suburbanites, beach bums, and city slickers. Welcome back with a bonus feature. Yay! To the entire Alex and Alan. Dot, dot, dot. Was it love or daddy issues? Okay. So this is just like a bonus because when I was going through her feed, this came up and it was nine years ago. So this was around the time that she was dating Alan, okay? So it's a relationship Q&A, plus size intimacy, long distance relationships, and more, all right? So this is just a little bonus for y'all, and I'm going to throw this on in here. So let's go. Got her all queued up, and I am ready, okay? She's already sped up. A video that I had said I was going to do a while ago, and I just haven't had a chance because I've been filming you guys lots and lots of stuff. But um, I feel like just sitting down and kind of... How do we feel about her with the really dark hair? I, You know what? I kind of like this more than the blonde. And I say that because she, for whatever reason, can't really keep up her blonde hair like, you know, she needs to do. But... What else? I mean, I, I can't say that I hate it because I don't. Chatting with you guys right now. So a while ago, I had posted that I was going to do a relationship Q&A because a lot of you guys have had relationship related questions for me. So I asked you guys on Instagram to comment your questions for me. And oh, girl, boy, whoever you are, there's 105 comments on my Instagram about it. Um, but I said no topics were off limits. So I'm just going to say in the beginning, um, if any of you are younger, there might be some more mature questions in here because you know, it just happens. So I'm just going to tell you guys in advance, if you want to click off, it may be a little mature, maybe not. We'll see what these questions bring. I love going into big sister mode for you guys because I never had a big sister, but my mom was always very open with me about relationships and life and just very honest and open. And I love that we had that relationship because I felt like it made me smarter in a lot of ways, um, more educated on certain topics. So, and I've been through a lot, oh a lot of experience God. with relationships, long distance, all sorts of stuff. So let's just get into these questions. I'm going to stop blabbering. So the first question that was asked is, is it weird having sex when you're bigger? Um, you know what? It's weird if you make it weird. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say more than anything. I've made body confidence videos so, so much on my channel. It's Here's my thing. Alex, by her own words, has always been bigger, right? So at the time of age where, you know, she would have been of age to be able to sleep with someone, I'm going to say it like that for the sake of YouTube, she was already big. So how can she even answer this question if she's never been intimate as a thin person or even just like a regular size person, like um, even close to it? You see what I'm saying? How can she really effectively answer this person's question when she's never done the deed as a, as a skinny person? She really doesn't know, and that should have been her answer. It's a huge part of being plus size, and with any women in general, I think things are weird if you make them weird. If you're confident, feel comfortable in your skin, and you just, like, be confident and comfortable and just do you and be comfortable, like, it won't be weird, like... Nothing's weird unless you make it weird. It's so true. The next girl asked kind of a similar question, but um, she said, what are you... The next question is, best or favorite positions when you're plus size? Okay. <laughs> like, I understand that being plus size can, like, limit you, but it doesn't really, like, limit you. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I've always thought it was, like, weird. Like, like I know plus size women may feel different, but, like, you can try what you want to try. Like, you never know if anything's going to work for you unless you try. Like, everybody is different. Like, even... All no! That wasn't the fucking question. Answer the goddamn question, okay? And for a big ass bitch, okay, you need to be telling these motherfuckers that the best position to be in is doggy style on your fucking knees because it's easier access. You don't have to hold your big ass stomach up. Tell these women the goddamn truth. Alex, tell them the truth. Plus size women and regular women have different shaped bodies, so different things will work for them. Some people are more agile, some people are not as agile. So um, it depends on what like you're comfortable with. Absolutely everyone is different. <laughs> this is so like I've never gotten so personal on my YouTube. I don't even know. <laughs> like there's a lot of different I, mean, I can't personally say like my favorite because that's just gonna make me seem for uncomfortable. But I think depending on the person, like you gotta be comfortable with your skin when it comes to being intimate with your partner. Like I think 
what part of your body that you're the most comfortable with, like show it off and flaunt it. Like if you're uncomfortable with a certain part, then you don't have to show it as much. It's about feeling comfortable in the bedroom. Like if you're not comfortable, it will be weird. It won't feel good. It's just going to be bad. So, you know, work with what's comfortable with you. Work with what you got, like flaunt it. And you know what? A big thing that I'm going to say is something that I have learned over time. Guys have even told girls before, they don't don't notice your imperfections in the bedroom. Like they don't, they're focused on how beautiful your curves are and how amazing they're feeling right now. So seriously, they don't give a fuck about your goddamn curves in the bedroom. Okay. Let me tell you what. <laughs> One of my cousins told me when I was like, how in hell did you fuck that ugly ass girl? And he said, man, pussy ain't got no face. That's what he said. In other words, you turn the goddamn lights off. It really don't matter. All the shit. Feels the same unless the bitch is loose as a goose. The hell, Alex, get your shit together. When you're in love with someone and you're making love, like they're not noticing your Yes, opinion. they are. Seriously, they're not. The next question said, please give your opinion on what to do if your partner has a vice you don't like and has never bought you flowers. What do you do? Break up or ignore it? By the way, love you. You're such an inspiration and seems so fun to be around. I love you too. Thank you you um okay so if they have a vice that you don't like and they've never bought you flowers and uh, what do you do break up or ignore it? okay it depends how important it is to you um what i have learned in relationships that compromise is a big thing but there are certain things that you can't compromise on you have to determine for yourself what is important to you and if they can't provide it then it's a deal breaker like one of the biggest things for you may not be a big thing for them so then you need to realize is it worth the compromise for you or do they need need to compromise to match your needs so that absolutely depends on your personal opinion it sounds to me if you said and they, they have a vice you don't like, and they've never, you put never in capital letters, bought you flowers, it seems like you're a little bit mad. So from just from the aura of this message, I'm getting the vibe that you're annoyed. I would voice your opinion to your man or woman, and then if they are not willing to comply with what you need, then you may need to reevaluate the relationship or work on some compromises. Next question says, what makes you truly happy? Is this, I'm assuming this would be in relationships, maybe, because it's a relationship Q&A. Um, what truly makes me happy is that, like, undeniable bond I have with my man like there are moments Not where like you're just with that person and your heart is just glowing like I get those moments with Alan so much like I'll just like look at him even in silence and my heart will just explode with girl you have made up an entire fairy tale in your goddamn head because at the end of this series right here we have watched 12 different vlogs that I have come together to make four separate like little like mini vlogs or whatever of your time with him what in the fuck are you talking about it was very apparent that he didn't want to be with you and i don't know why he stuck around well i do know why he stuck around for so long same reason yard does because you're a paymaster allegedly ha ha i know why they stay in there them men of color boy they are, man total sugar babies those two anyway not all love like just having that undeniable connection with him is the best feeling because like i'm just like i just make a look eye contact with him and i'm like oh you like you you know that's like such the best feeling but um what truly makes me happy is just love friends family boyfriend love is love love is great it makes me happy next question says what's your advice on letting go of a past relationship and getting out of a funk <sighs> girl so uh a huge relationship that took me a really long time to get over was a couple years ago and i was in a funk for quite some time and it took me a very long time to get over him um Letting go of a past relationship can be challenging, but I think it's cliche, but like keeping yourself busy is one of the best things I can tell you. Like if you're stop, at home- Stop your fucking lying. Your way of getting over one man is getting your big ass up under another one, okay? We have been watching you, Alex, for years, okay? <laughs> your relationship with Alan wasn't even cold in the grave yet and you had already made up yourself some bumble accounts and shit and you were already back out there dating and whatnot and before we knew it bam y'all was in the picture so you stop your fucking lying and you tell these women the goddamn truth bitch stop lying you always why you always lying why you always lying shit alone and not busy or like not doing much and you're just thinking about it all day you're gonna end up like going totally cuckoo bananas and you're really like you're just gonna keep thinking about it and think about it so stay busy distract yourself and when you feel like ready to move on i will say that like 
this is just me being totally honest. I don't think you can really like fully let go of someone else until you meet someone new. Like, oh! I'm just being brutally oh! honest here. So people are gonna be totally Boom! I don't ever remember watching this video, but do I know Alex or do I know her? Bam, I told you. This girl just to get over one man of color, she find her another one to lay up on the God damn it. I told y'all. Disagree with that, but I think when you meet someone new and better for you, like it's just a realization of why that last person and you did not work out. So um, stay busy. Um, keep pushing forward. Time heals all. You know, when you feel ready, go out and talk to new people. You know, just busy, busy, busy girl. <laughs> It'll help that funk. Do do things that make you happy. Get your endorphins going. Do things that make you happy. Because when relationships end, I think a lot of people have that realization and they're like, oh my God, like I forgot what I like. I forgot what makes me happy. So take that time for yourself and girl, you just discover the crap out of yourself because you'll feel great. The next question says, what is I really wish that you would take your own fucking advice, Alexandra Rodriguez. Well, Alexandra Thomas during this time, aka learning to be fearless. Okay. I don't even understand how you're learning to be fearless when you feel weird vlogging just because someone pulled up next to you. You were doing it 10 years ago, and here we are in 2024, and your ass still the fucking same. You ain't grown at all <laughs> mentally. That body don't grown, though, because that fucking back, that fucking silver back, that shit is growing by the day. Holy shit. Is your advice for dating when you're 16 and what is some of your helpful advice when you're a big girl and you're having sex with a skinny guy oh, oh your answer should have been i can't answer that because you are under age you're under age hello alex are you related to your father uh-oh uh-oh what did i tell y'all when you go back and you watch these motherfuckers, you start learning some real shit. Did you hear me? The person is 16. She doesn't need, why even record this? Now, when I turn this shit back on, because I don't remember this, I don't remember watching it, but this bitch better not give her advice. What she needs to be telling her is I can't talk to you because you are underage. What the fuck? Um, dating when you're 16. Oh yeah, dating when you're 16. Mm. Well, you're young. I will say that. It doesn't mean that you're not mature, but like being young, you know, dating when you're 16. I would say probably take it slow. I think a lot of people feel a lot of hormones when they're younger. I mean, I was one of them. Like we all, we all have hormonal feelings. That's normal. Uh, but I would say just take it slow. You know, be comfortable and like I don't know if you're personally having sex with any guy. Answering. But, you know whatever but like just make sure you are ready to have sex like because from personal experience i will say that like with the person you lose your virginity to will probably play a really big role emotionally with you i'll say that's the guy who i took a long time to get over because i did lose my virginity to him and that's a really big deal like it now was that the one that nancy let you carry your ass all the way to jamaica with <laughs> see I thought that I was gonna save this for the series, but I might show this shit right now because there is no way she should be giving a 16 year old advice about SEX, okay? This girl is cut from the same cloth as her fucking father. Holy shit. I don't know. It doesn't have to be a big deal to everybody. I'm just being, this is all my opinion straight up. But like, I, it's true that psychologically us as women hormonally can sometimes attach to the person we first have intimacy with. So I will just say that like, make sure that you feel ready and comfortable, like never feel peer pressure to do it. Um, I know that too many girls are having sex because their boyfriend is like threatening to break up with them. And that's absolutely never okay. Like if you feel pressure to have sex with someone and like you're not ready like do not like literally run for your life because that person is toxic so seriously just be careful but um the next question is um uh, being a big girl and having sex with she should not be speaking to anyone's child about this at all i don't care if that 16 year old wrote her she should have not chosen that question simply because of the fucking 
fucking age, guys. Oh my God. I think I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna post this tonight or I, I don't know. Maybe I will wait. I don't know. But this boils my skin. Do you hear me? Holy shit. So the skinny guy, <laughs> I am plus size. You guys have seen Alan. He's very, he's thin. He's thinner. Um, Honestly, I don't think there's much to say for advice on that. Like, I have never had any problems. <laughs> like, just if you're comfortable with each other, like, there shouldn't be any problems. I think that's one of the biggest things I can say with relationships and intimacy. If you feel like things are weird, like, and you're not fully comfortable, then you might need to get to know each other more. It might not just be your time yet to be intimate with one another. Like, comfortableness and intimacy really do go hand in hand because if you don't feel right, it's just going to be awkward in the bedroom and it's just not going to work right you clearly are together because you find each other attractive and like something about each other i would hope so it should just be making love to your man or woman and that's okay regardless of your body size just kind of feel it out again it just comes with what you guys feel right with each other you, know, you gotta do what feels right experimentation is the key my friend you just gotta test the waters what things about guys are turn-ons for me personally <laughs> what am i attracted to what things about guys are turn-ons i personally I like like cuddly like like nibbles and stuff like i'm just i'm a very like touchy feely person so that's one of like my favorite things it's like just like cuddle me <laughs> i'm such a dark oh my god yeah. but, um, like attractive appearance wise like i don't know i'm just attracted to what i'm attracted to i've never had like a specific type or anything i'm just attracted to what i'm attracted to like the second i saw alan i was just like you <laughs> you <laughs> and i had never like been probably attracted to his type before i've never been i don't know i'm just i'm attracted to what i'm attracted to like it's just that's just what it's always been like for me and glasses when he wears his glasses i'm just like jesus you yeah who else loves glasses on men Amen. Amen. what should you do if you feel like your boyfriend never makes you a priority how long has this been going on is the question um i think a lot of times in the beginning of relationships people struggle with prioritizing and new relationships perhaps um but if you feel like he never makes your priority then you need to absolutely voice your opinion to him and just tell him that and then hopefully he'll understand your side and if not then that's not good because it's absolutely important to make each other a priority to a certain extent you know people still absolutely need their space and their time apart to have me time like i absolutely need my me time like alan and i take time to just chill by ourselves to be comfortable and you know do us that's absolutely acceptable but there's absolutely no excuse for someone not making you a priority because in a relationship you need to make each other feel special and wanted and take time for each other so you need to voice your opinion and if they're not willing to comply then do so what is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you while in a relationship <sighs> Man, I, hey, oh, man. That's not a word. Mm, I don't know if i can say that <laughs> how embarrassing are we getting here i think that's the question i'm trying to think about the most embarrassing thing oh my god <laughs> I did say in the beginning of this that it would get inappropriate, but the very, 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 very first time, totally farted. <laughs> this is how much I love you guys and YouTube. Oh, you are wild. The next question said, I need boy advice. If you've liked a guy since the sixth grade and you want to tell him because he does stuff that make other people believe he does like you and others ask if you two are dating, but you're scared to tell him, what do you do? <laughs> I would just tell him. <laughs> like, I'd like probably back in the day, I'd probably be like really corny and like write him a letter, check yes or no. But um, are you, if you really like like him and you think he likes you, then are you talking to a child right now? She said since sixth grade, which means they are probably in high school now or in seventh or eighth grade. Alex, this is problematic. Now, to everyone who is always like, oh, Nella, you know, you're you're. You know, being too tough on Alex, like she's not talking to kids. Here's an example of her doing it. Actually, two examples. Can we find out through a friend if he likes you? I would have like a friend to ask because I'm shy, but I would rather find out now so I can either move on or not. <laughs> like, I'm not an, I'm actually a really patient person, actually. I don't like waiting, I like to know answers. So, personally, I would ask, but I mean, if you're scared, then maybe wait until you're comfortable. The next question says, how to tell if a shy guy likes you? Um, oh, shy guys, shy guys. Unfortunately, if you're working with a shy guy, you're gonna have to recognize like right away that he's shy and he's probably not gonna be super voicing of his opinions and feelings. So you might have to open the doors of communication if you're dealing with a shy guy. And then if he is non-reciprocative, then you probably 
aren't meant to be because you want someone who can at least voice their feelings for you. So next question, in your opinion, can long distance relationships really work? Well, as you guys know, I've mentioned in a couple of videos, I did long distance before for a couple of years with a guy I was really serious with, uh, my first love actually. And I, it did work for the couple of years, but it takes a toll. It takes a huge toll. Um, yeah, big toll. It depends how much of a distance there is probably. We we had out of the country distance and it takes a lot of money for the both of us because we were going back and forth and back and forth. He'd come here, I'd go there. Must have been the Jamaican guy. I told y'all this woman loved her some, 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 some black peen, okay? Y'all thought I was just kidding. I'm not fucking kidding. This woman is her father's child, okay? There, he'd come here, I'd go there. It, it gets expensive and it gets heartbreaking after a while. Um, If you have the means to eventually like live together and make the plans to move to each other's location at some point, then you're probably gonna be fine. But I think it depends absolutely on circumstances for different situations and people. If it had been in the country, maybe it would have been less hard. I don't know, regardless, I don't think we were totally meant to be because we had other issues. So I think long distance relationships are absolutely doable though. Like if you have a plan, and if you really, really love each other, I think love can conquer all regardless. <laughs> I'm gonna do one last question because I think it's been a while and I don't know how long I've been filming. <laughs> um, I'll do another video with more questions next time. So this person wrote, hi, I am 22, recently going through a divorce and I'm also plus size. Unfortunately, I'm having a really hard time feeling confident anymore. I feel most desperate for attention. What advice could you give me on feeling more confident? What advice do you have for getting back out there into the dating world? Hmm. You know what? I think, again, like I've always said, confidence is something that's absolutely like necessary for so much in the world. And um, until you fully have it, it's going to be hard to get back out into the dating world. So for right now, maybe you should focus on yourself a little bit and working on getting yourself comfortable in your skin. For getting back out there into dating and getting comfortable, I would, like personally, I feel best when I decide to like work on myself and like doll myself up. I feel really good when I go and like do my hair or put on a fresh face of makeup or maybe buy a new sweater. Like maybe just, you know, treat yourself a little bit, pamper, get yourself in really good spirits and feeling really good. If you want to buy a new little bra or lingerie just to wear for yourself, it'll get you feeling all sassy and good. And that's most important because you want to feel good and confident. So once you feel like you yourself are enough for you and you feel great in the skin you're in, that's when you'll be more ready to get out there into the dating world. So take some time for you, you know, again, like show off your assets, you know, maybe put some flattering pieces on the parts of you that you're not super confident with. So that way you look in the mirror and you feel amazing and then confidence will come. And then personally, I've always felt that guys are really attracted to confident women, regardless of like size or looks. Like if you are walking down the road with confidence and you're just exuding and radiating confidence and like light, like guys are going to be way more attracted to you, like regardless of size. Like if you saw you know, freaking Heidi Klum out there and she was uh, not confident at all and just looked like a sad, like, thing walking down the street, like, people wouldn't be attracted to her, but, you know, you can see, like, a fabulous thick girl walking down the road with confidence and, you know, people will be more attracted to you if you're confident and comfortable, so it always starts with you. Everything in life starts with you, your confidence, and how you feel about yourself, so get yourself in a really good place and then try to date, but, but yeah, let the confidence exude and they will come to you. That's, like, a new... New quote, let the, confidence, let the confidence exude and it'll come to you. Interesting. Yeah? No? You feeling it? Okay. This video is probably super long and I'm so sorry, but um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Whew, that was a lot of talking and a lot of thinking. I will absolutely do another relationship Q&A video. Um, so if you want to participate in that one, make sure you follow me. Hopefully you will do it with adults and not children. On Instagram, at learning to be fearless. That way you can comment on the next picture so I can hopefully answer your question. I'm so sorry to get to answer all of them on here, but there were so many. I hope I kind of touched on a lot of people's with all those questions. Hopefully there were like some duplicates. I love you guys very much. Thank you for tuning into my channel and supporting me. I feel very blessed and I'm just really thankful for you guys because you guys just make me so happy and I appreciate all your love and feedback. Squeaky chair, squeaky chair. All right, guys, I'm going to go. I will see you in my next video. I love you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, girl. Shit. Plus size intimacy, man. She's got another one, but I'm not going to do that right now because I have been recording all day and now hey I'm guys welcome back to my channel so I'm really excited to this video today because it's a little bit okay so she was just gonna go ahead and talk anyway I said I wasn't doing it right now ah -ah! so anyways guys this right here problematic but anyways, thank you guys for 
hanging out. I'm I'm gonna decide whether I'm gonna post this now or later. Um, I don't know because I was gonna put this as a part of the series, but man, I'm thinking that I need to post this now. So I don't know. I guess I'll just mull it over. But anyways, with that being said, I really do appreciate you guys um, hanging out with me again. And with that being said, to all of my Suburbanites, Beach Bums and City Slickers, bye.